we meet again so um last last the previous week i went for a meeting uh it was a discussion meeting and femicide all those things uh it was in the youth and uh we were talking discussing on how to how can we be a better people to avoid these things and um it was an interesting me- meeting actually and if you have time and you're a youth you're welcome to come share good time with us here at HGC Harvest of Global Church Kiambu Road and uh, we were listening to certain topics and all that but time was limited for sure cuz it's a topic that's very wide and um there are certain things that stood out to me and I thought we didn't have time to tackle and I thought to myself how about I do it here and I think it's something that can help all of us uh the topic and discussion then we were talking about the aspect of masculinity and femininity and then there's something somebody commented and I begged to defer but we didn't have time to actually tackle that point um it's a story of emotions i feel like for the longest time we have misunderstood what emotions are and we usually classify it whatever we feel like it and the reason why i want to do this video is because somebody said something that i thought is not true at all they were talking about somebody said and i quote men should get in touch with their femininity and i was like okay i disagree with that and they also said men they said men should be emotional yeah and um the reason why i differ with these two statements is number one, it's the classification of emotions the fact emotions are not either masculine nor feminine emotions are a faculty of our souls and the best way to go through this is maybe if i break down to you our souls have three faculties in them there's the mind there's the emotion and there's the will which means each and every human being has these th- three things yes the mind emotions and will so first of all with just that statement you understand that emotions are neither masculine nor feminine yes but when i dig deep and try to understand what this guy meant i understand what he's trying to mean he means he would like men to express emotions like women do that's why he would use the term men to embrace femininity which is also wrong this is why i will explain this and i wish you understand i think one of the things we need to understand clearly is that men are different from women how we express love how we express or we receive love is different how we respond to things is different i'll use a very good example you see if a scenario happens right now the nature of a man would not be for example to scream or what they are wired to think of how can we solve this or how can we get away from this thing so you see their response their the emotional response then is not the same for a woman they would call out for help a man would think of what can i do to help you get what i'm saying do you know both of them have expressed their emotions but differently the difference between men and women is they express emotions differently and the reason why i want to tackle this is because we we are quickly we are quickly trying to tell men to express emotions like women i think even science has already proven it that it's not possible why haven't you noticed like i i saw another article over there saying that the biggest mistake of our generation is trying to treat male depression like female depression male depression is not treated with sympathy it's treated with affirmation but the reason why it it, it always affects men differently is because they try to treat male depression like female depression 
and and I really like that they got to that understanding because it means even through science they showed you that we respond to things very differently. Why do you think it's so difficult for people to publicly advocate for the problems of men and boys? Because victimhood doesn't work for men the way it works for women. We don't feel sorry for men. And rightly so, by the way. I am not advocating that we feel sorry for men because I don't believe that's a solution to men's problems. One of the reasons that men's mental health is not as good as it could be is that A, we do live in a society which discourages them from being men and being the way that men are supposed to be. But the other reason is that most of the personal development and psychology fields are geared towards female ways of being. And most of the ways that we treat, for example, depression, men don't need the same thing as women do when it comes to that. What men need is to feel powerful and capable. So before I go far, I wanted to explain something about emotions. And uh, I hope I have made it a little bit clear about why I tend to differ with the two. But the more I explain about emotions, you'll get to understand what I mean. So the faculty of the soul is the mind, emotions and will. But one thing we know about the, the last two, emotions and will, they are byproducts of the information your mind has. I'll give you an example. If I come and deceive you, somebody has said something about you, you will react with an emotion, be it the anger or disappointment or whatever. And you may even go to the extent of acting out that emotion. This is why we are always told, do not make decisions with your emotions. Do not judge situations with your emotion is because you can be misinformed and by that you'll create a byproduct of a wrong, of a false emotion, based on wrong information. That is why we are not supposed to make decisions with emotion. And for men, matter of fact, I'll say this, our first response to anything is logic before emotion. Logic and then emotions comes next. That's why as men, we may not respond the way you want us to, especially ladies. Sometimes they may think because I have not flinched, it means I feel nothing. No, I may be angered by the same thing, but how I react is very different. That's an example. So with that example, I've actually explained to you why I personally, and I would advise for you to be careful how you react to the emotions because you may be misinformed. And again, one of the person who said about men to get in touch with the emotions, and he used an example of Christ. He said, uh, there's a situation where Christ cried, there's a situation where Christ was angered. But you see, the difference of Christ and most of us is Christ is informed by the Holy Spirit. So his emotions are not falsified. They are not misinterpreted. They are not wrong information because Christ had been backed by the Holy Spirit to react and reaffirm what the word of God says. That's why he reacted in such, in such a way. The pain he felt was beyond his feelings. It was, his soul was informed of the injustice that was going on to the people who he was speaking. For example, in the time uh, in the temple when he threw things away, he was angered of the disgrace that the, the, the temple of God was being subjected to by people trading in church. So the information that really, the information that triggered the byproduct of anger was based on honor. He noticed these people did not honor God. They did not honor place of worship. So what, are the, what does this mean? It means we need to be careful who informs you for you to react without emotion. I don't know why when we speak of these things, the first thing that hits somebody's mind is, I am saying to men not to express emotion. I am not saying that. No, no, no. Hear me and hear me well. I'm not saying that. I am saying, if you are a lady and you want to understand why this guy is good, learn how he reacts. Learn how he processes his emotion. Don't force him to process it like you do. Do not want him to process things like you do because he's not the same. He is a man, you're a woman. So do not express. The main problem, and you, I tell you, and you've heard it even in the previous video, the one thing that will always cripple any kind of generation is lack of identity and understanding who you are. 
and it goes to the little things as man and woman. I'll give you another point that will challenge that thought if you're thinking about it while, you are, while, while watching this video. Don't you think God knew when he made man different, man to respond different from a woman? What makes you think you can tell somebody to change? And when you've said, when you've told somebody to change, how has it helped them? You see? So we try things that don't work over and over again and expect, and expect it to work. I think that's the definition of insanity. Trying things over and over again and expecting different results. Trying the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. Go back to the basics. What is a man? Who is a man? Why did God create him like this? If you're so, 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 if you really, I'll tell you the truth, if you really want to know, go to God. You wouldn't be aligning with the way the world chooses you to behave.